all the time. <clears throat> and God is faithful. And he wants us to be faithful too. Uh, I want to go back and review a story that uh, is pretty common to all of us. I think all, we all know about uh, Joshua and uh, what Joshua did. And I have a ringing in my ear. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, You know, all the kids learn. It's one of those big stories, you know, Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. Uh, it was, it, uh, there's a, a Negro spiritual that was, uh, you're probably all familiar, familiar with. We used to have a, a record by uh, Vaughn Monroe, I think. He's some kind of a bass. Anyway, it goes, Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. I'm not gonna sing, I'm just gonna say the words. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. Uh, and, and then the verse that says, you talk about your, your men of Gideon, you brag about your men of Saul, there's none like good old Joshua and the battle of Jericho. Uh, and it is a, a, a story that uh, is, is worthy of retelling because there's a lot of lessons for us to learn in, in, that, uh, in that story. And not just a story, but it's a it's a it's a uh, an event that happened, and it was real, uh, although impossible. But of course, we know with God all things are possible. Uh, <clears throat> God had given them uh, a promise that they were going to enter this land, literally. And we know that they could have entered in after they they left uh, Egypt, but uh, because of a lack of faith. They didn't, and they had, had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. But finally, after 40 years was up, they, they came to the, the, to the Jordan and crossed over, and, and uh, there was, there was uh, Jericho. Uh, <clears throat> it was very important that Jericho was, uh, Jericho was just on the, on the, the west side of, of the Jordan River. Uh, it was a very important thing that they that they uh, conquered Jericho because Jericho was uh, situated in a place where it was like you almost uh, that that's the natural traffic went went that way. Uh, it was right before you entered into into uh, uh, the land of Canaan, <clears throat> and uh, you know. When you come, came to Jericho at the time, and they didn't know for a long time just the, how big Jericho was or how many of the wall, how big the walls were and that, but, but uh, it didn't make military sense that they could go in there and conquer Jericho. The Israelites didn't have any weapons. You know, a lot of the, the battles and things like that, they didn't have weapons like the, the enemy had. They didn't have the chariots and, and the swords and things of that nature, even the bows and that. Uh, but uh, God won a, a mighty victory that day, and they won a mighty victory. And it tells us in Hebrews 11:30 why. And it's it's you know it's it's a very simple verse, but it says, "By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days." Uh, so it just says, "By faith," and that's all it says in this passage. But uh, I think it's well to go back and look at that story and to see what kind of faith that, uh, that it took to cross to, uh, to conquer Jericho. And I, and I want to cover about five different aspects of that faith. And I, <clears throat> I think that one of the most important things for us is to always remember that these stories that we have been passed down to us and, and retelled, they do us, they're just entertainment if we can't find application in our own lives. Because it always kind of amazes me that what applies to Israel as a nation, we can take those same things and apply individually to our, our hearts. Our faith, their faith, uh, what applied very often even on a national level, 
we can apply individually in our own, own spiritual walk, our walk with God. Uh, <clears throat> so in the first place, the walls came down because of a, a, a faith that in spite of long odds, and to look at some of the odds here, if, if you've ever visited the Holy Land, which I have not, but you know today we've got the internet and whatever, uh, and a lot of resources that we can find out what is there. But uh, to get there coming from the east, you either had to, uh, uh, you either had to uh, cross the plains and enter where Jericho was, and then you ascended up into the mountains and just off to your left a little bit is, is where Jerusalem is and, and all the Beth cities, Bethlehem, uh, I forget there's about four of them that kind of surround Jerusalem. Or you can go along the, the, the Dead Sea, the, the shoreline, and then go up in. But either way, uh, Jericho was basically the main place that you had to, to go through. And uh, <clears throat> the Canaanites built uh, Jericho as kind of a, a gateway fortress to protect the land. And uh, inv invading, uh, invading that land, they had to, they had to contend with, with Jericho because it was, it was pretty hard. To, to, the, the natural trade paths uh, w went right through there. But, uh, and Jericho was just, just too strong and uh, you know, it was of a city to, to be ignored. They, unless they conquered Jericho, Jericho was a city of, of pagans. We know that, uh, that the land had become uh, totally reprobate. Uh, it was a city of strategic importance and uh, a city of uh, humanly impossible, especially considering the children of Israel and, and what, they, what they had at the, at the time. Uh, the, the, the pagan unbelief had to be confronted because Jericho was was uh, was sort of the center of that. It was uh, in many regards it was a, a, a city of trade. Uh, <clears throat> they could uh, it was <clears throat> it was important for them because in order to they had to confront and defeat Jericho. And with, without it, I don't think that they could have been successful as a nation. Uh, but their walls were, were very big. Uh, basically, Jericho sat in a plain. As soon as you, when you entered the, the, the Jordan Valley there, it's a, 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 lush, a, a large valley. Uh, there were, um, uh, what do you call them, oases. Basically, Jericho was built on, a, on an oasis. They had a natural spring right there within the city. And they had built up the walls uh, that were uh, very large. Uh, and really, <clears throat> we didn't know a lot about Jericho. Jericho has been around, it, in fact, they consider it the oldest city ever. It existed long before the pharaohs and Egypt and, and those by uh, several thousand years. Uh, <clears throat> there was actually two walls. There was an inner wall and an outer, outer wall, and they're both built on a slope, and it was all virtually man-made because you're talking about a, a level plain, so they had to bring in these things. And <clears throat> this city had been destroyed and uh, rebuilt and destroyed and rebuilt, and the constant reconstruction had actually created kind of a hill, but... but uh, <clears throat> As researchers uh, dug through various layers, they, uh, beginning about 150 years ago, uh, they discovered that uh, it was uh, dest destroyed by fire approximately 1,400 years ago, or 1,400 BC. Archaeological, uh, archaeologists, uh, I can't even speak today. Archaeologist uh, Bryant Wood describes the walls of Jericho as following says the mound or tell of Jericho was surrounded by a great earthen rampart 
or embankment with a stone retaining wall as the base. The retaining wall was some 12 to 15 feet high. On top of that was a, was a mud brick wall of six feet thick and about 20 to 26 feet high. <clears throat> the crest of the embankment was a similar mud brick wall whose base was roughly 46 feet above the ground level outside the retaining wall that is what and, and that's what uh, loomed high above the Israelites as they marched around the city each day for seven days. Humanly speaking, it was impossible for the Israelites to impenetrate the impregnable bastion of Jericho. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, they made it out of mud bricks because uh, that's all they had to work with. The, the rocks that were hauled in were probably hauled in quite a long distance to build that first wall. But the mud bricks were unbaked uh, mud walls, and uh, they had to be continually maintained because they would weather fairly quickly. Uh, <clears throat> he goes on to say that there were probably several thousand, at least several thousand people in the city, and uh, they were well prepared for a siege with a spring inside the city wells and the harvest having just been taken in, uh, as, it, as it mentions in Joshua 1, 315. They had plenty of food. In fact, uh, they found these large jars, uh, vases with, uh, with, with grain storage. In fact, grain was stored in large vases for literally thousands of years was the means of storing grain. Uh, even the Roman ships that brought over, they would take these great big, like a vase, but they stood very tall, and they would stack them, and they all fitted with each other in these Roman ships as they took the, the grain over to uh, Europe and uh, Rome. But uh, they, found, they found vases that had grain in them and from this leftover from the fire that, that destroyed the city. <clears throat> so the city was uh, well prepared uh, for a siege for someone coming against them and uh, it was uh, you know a, a, a frontal attack just simply wouldn't succeed it was Im virtually impossible uh, militarily and they had no way to, to tear the city down so uh, you know if they, they couldn't they, if they couldn't uh, they, if they had to defeat Jericho and they couldn't go over the walls you know what could they really do but uh, uh, because of the walls <clears throat> that uh, the, their faith was a, a faith that really followed a very strange plan and you know our faith follows a very strange plan as far as if you consider you know what most people think of, of Christians as being a little bit odd in their faith in that they believe in certain things that uh, aren't maybe logical from their point of view. Let's read those first five verses of, of Joshua 6. It says, Now Jericho was sh securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. So the city was closed up. The children of Israel were out there. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the men of valor. You shall march around the city, all of your men of war, and you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And the seven priests shall bear the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with ram's horns, and when you hear the sound of the, of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the walls of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. So uh, <clears throat> he gave them uh, some uh, unusual things that, that they were to do. They were supposed to march around the, the city once a day for six days. Uh, they're supposed to march with the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, they carried it around the city. Uh, they had seven priests in, in front of them. And on the seventh day, they were to march around the Jericho seven times. 
all this symbology that, uh, of, of things here, but, uh, uh, and then they were to have the, the priests blow the ram's horn as they march. On the seventh day, around the, on the seventh day, they had the people shout. And when the, when the people shouted, the walls were to come down and they, entered the, they were to enter the city and conquer it. Well, God told them that, uh, you know, what they were to do. The people actually had to be quiet for those first six days that they went around the city. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> he told them to put, put soldiers in, in front of the priests and behind the ark. Uh, and then uh, the priests were to uh, blow the shofar or the, the, the ram's horn as they went around. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, what, what are the chances uh, from a military as aspect that you could conquer a city that way? It just uh, to make these walls come down. Uh, obviously, it, uh, you know, marching and blowing horns and shouting, uh, you know, that's something you hear at a football game and, and uh, you know, it has maybe some, somewhat of a psychological effect, cheering, but uh, it's not gonna bring those walls down. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think any military expert is gonna go along with that, the marching and horns and the shouting. Uh, and really, you know, all you have is just a lot of noise, but uh, it's not a, not a military strategy. Uh, it, it would be uh, considered a blunder if that was the case. But uh, <clears throat> they had a faith that, that somehow God gave them the victory. Because what had they seen? You know, they had just crossed over Bab or over, over uh, the Jordan, and, and they had just gotten through with you know what happened right before this, just within a few days. They crossed over and they kept the first Passover. They ate the grain of the land. This is the first time they ate the grain of the land. And uh, they kept that Passover supper at twilight, it says. And uh, uh, that next day, the manna stopped. They had been getting manna for 40 years. And suddenly, the manna stopped and they knew that they had arrived. God had brought them into the promised land. And uh, so, you know, it was, it was these things that they, they knew that God provided and, and uh, they'd seen all these miracles and these people were, were a little bit different than those that came directly out of Egypt. Uh, you know, they, they did have a faith that uh, believed that God could do things and, and they, they were exercising it here. And uh, Joshua, I think, is one of the a great example of, of, of a man of faith. Uh, in fact, he says in, in, in these verses, says, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its fighting men. That's uh, past tense. It's I have delivered it. God says, you know, it's, it's a done deal. All they had to do is follow, follow his instructions. And... Uh, you know, I think that's a key point. It's, uh, it, it's just a matter of time. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, in, in a real sense, it's, it's sort of like, you know, we look to the future in hope, and we know that really it's a done deal, that God's going to carry out his promises, but he expects us to be faithful to, to follow his promises. And faith is more than just saying something or uh, there's a there's a there's doing that goes along with it, and God put Himself in the middle of this this plan. You know, they carried the the Ark of the Covenant around with them, and above the Ark of the Covenant was the cherubim. It says in one place, between the cherubim, where God dwells, or I think it's where He reveals Himself to man. And it was a when it was put into the tabernacle, it was a very sacred thing. Uh, but so I think they carried around the Ark of the Covenant because it was, it was saying that, you know, it's our God that's going to deliver Jericho to them. And it's not going to be because of what we can do. Uh, 
the walls became, they fell because they, they had a faith that expressed itself in a, a persevering obedience. And that's something that we need in our, in our Christian walk. You just gotta keep walking sometimes, no matter what happens, no matter how, things, how hard things get. You know, if there's any real hero here, it's, it's God himself. Uh, the, the, the people didn't have that much to do. All they had to do is walk around the city just one time, one time each day for six days, and then on the seventh day, they, uh, they, uh, they walked, walked around seven times, blowing the, the, the trumpets, and, and, and they all shouted. Uh, so, you know, our, our faith has to be actually put to work. God's given us instructions. Uh, if you read on down past the chapter, uh, verses six and seven talks about uh, diligent preparation that they had to do. Uh, verse 10, the careful discipline that they had to exercise. Verse 14 talks about the, their patient repetition. They had to keep, keep on keeping on. Uh, verse 20 talks about the loud exultation. In other words, with their mouth, they had to declare the victory. Verse 21 talks about uh, complete obedience. And 23 through 25 talks about the great compassion that's involved here. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, God tells us basically that, you know, it's not by our efforts that, uh, that you know, he's, he delivers us and he gives us salvation. You know, he'll knock the walls down. He, he just... Uh, wants us to be part of the exercise our faith in it because uh, you know he wants us to be uh, uh, he, he wants us to to love him you know through faith and, and not uh, not some ritual that we have to go through and it's it's so easy for mankind to just follow into rituals uh, I think so many religions have just you know, they have all these things that you have to do and, and you, whether it's going through a certain rec recitation or, uh, uh, or whatever it is, washing dishes a certain way or, and having dishes for this or just a lot of different things that uh, the, the Pharisees and, the, and the, those of, of that faith have certainly fell into that. And I think we, we, we uh, lose sight of, uh, and I think that we too can fall into habits even though we don't keep a lot of those things. But, you know, it's gotta be more than just, just uh, automatic. I, th I think God wants us to think daily on, on the things that we do. You know, we get up, we go to church or uh, whatever we do, it's, it's gotta have meaning to it. It can't be just uh, an exercise of, of tradition. Uh, traditions, I think, are good, but they've got to be from the heart. Uh, the feast that, that uh, the Israel kept, the, the, the seven great feasts and that, God, when, when, when it started losing meaning to them and they started doing thing by habit, it, it became a stink in his nose. He, he didn't, he had no pleasure in it. But as long as there was faith mi mixed in, I think God appreciated it, their faith. Uh, but uh, you know, as Hebrews wants us to understand, it's by faith that these things are done that our, our, we practice our faith. So the the faith that was acted as in, they acted in faith in spite of the ignorance of what they didn't know. You know, they didn't know how all this is gonna to come to pass. They just had to have faith. And there's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot that we don't understand. And uh, you know, in today's day, we see things unfolding and we think, well, surely this is the time of the end. But it doesn't matter whether the Lord comes tomorrow or 200 years from now, it really doesn't matter. Because we still, we have to have faith no matter what. And whether he comes tomorrow or 200 years from now, we, 
our, our faith does the same thing. And that's why I think a lot of people put too much, too much uh, importance on maybe prophecy. I'm not wanting to diminish prophecy in a sense, but prophecy to me is a, is a testimony of God's awesome, you know, he knows what happens, what will happen hundreds of years, thousands, even thousands of years away. And we can look back and see all the prophecies that have been fulfilled. And it's, but it's our faith that knows that the, the rest of revelation, whatever we understand about it, is gonna to come to pass. We may not understand it at the time, just what's going on. The disciples didn't understand what Jesus was about to do, yet they were counted faithful. But they didn't understand. And so, you know, you hear these people talking on, you know, and they've got it all figured out when it comes to prophecy and all that. And I, I like reading Revelation and, and that, but, but the thing is, I'm not worried if I can't quite understand all, all the prophecies. I am worried if I don't understand why God wants me to direct my paths. I need to know that. We need to know that. Uh, we need to know how to, how to, how to exercise godliness. Uh, <clears throat> but faith is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a belief that, that, uh, that we exercise it's, it's kind of like going into an elevator. We have faith that when we go in there, that, that elevator is going to take us up to the next floor or whatever and, and not fall down. We put faith in the engineering and all that. And, it just, and it's the same way. We, we have faith that, uh, that God told us that he's going to, going to do certain things for us. Uh, you know, Abraham had a faith. And he believed that somehow that God would deliver his son. Uh, but he went ahead and used the knife, or he was going to. I think that was real faith. And uh, you know, I think Peter was uh, was uh, you know he received a high honor because he was he was picked as one of Jesus' disciples. He's considered a, a pillar of the faith. <clears throat> but uh, you know he. he he fell away, or he didn't fall away, but he doubted. And I think a lot of us, you know, we, we think that, uh, that we shouldn't ever doubt. Well, I would like to say that. I know that one of our songs, I always think when we, we hear it, it says, uh, I, I don't remember what it is, but it says that we shouldn't doubt. Well, I agree that we shouldn't doubt, but we're going to doubt. We're going to have uh, doubts. Peter doubted uh, in... Uh, John 6, 66 through 69, it says, for that, time, for that time, many of his disciples went back and walked. And this is after Jesus had told them that eat of his, eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. And Peter didn't understand what he was talking about. He didn't understand. And a lot of others didn't, but they, they, had, they had left. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So, you know, it's, it's both a, it, it's a lack of faith in this world. Uh, you know, I believe that we've been shown, uh, we have enough to know. You know, there may be things that we don't know, but we, we have enough information to build a faith on. God's word is, is, uh, uh, is mighty. And uh, <clears throat> in Psalms 34, verse 8, it says, O oh, see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Uh, we have to be like, like the father who exercises faith by bringing up his child to, to Jesus to be healed. And he said, Lord, I believe, but, but help my unbelief. He recognized that, you know, maybe his, his <clears throat> he wasn't all, all there, but he had enough faith to know that, that Jesus could heal him. He had the faith to believe, but 
but uh, he wanted to grow in his belief, in his, uh, so I think that, you know, on, on the children of Israel's part, it took a lot of faith to, to march around the city. Uh, you know, they didn't understand how it was going to happen. And, but they just, they just understood that, that it was going to happen, that God was faithful. Uh, you know, in, in the big decisions of life, faith is, is, is not always 100% certainty. Uh, we don't know if, you know, our loved one is going to live or die or those kinds of things, but it's faith that, that, that we realize that uh, is the only thing we have to hang on to because God's faithful to, to uh, whether we, whether we uh, survive one illness or another, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that we have faith and uh, that we have faith until the end. Uh, you know, some people think that living by faith means that we never question, have questions in our beliefs, but, uh, you know, Moses told God, or, or, you know, he told God that he couldn't, uh, he couldn't do certain things because of his, of his, uh, his speaking ability. And, uh, you know, even Abraham had some doubt there when he had, you know, he didn't wait on God to fulfill his promises. He had a child by Hagar instead of Sarah. Uh, so, you know, if even some of these great men could, can question their faith, I, I think we have to realize that, uh, you know, when, when we fall sometimes, we don't just stop there. Uh, even though we make mistakes, it says that we have an advocate with the Father. And, uh, you know, our faith should, be, should stay strong. And we see the, we see the end result on, on all, all of these, these men of faith. You know, Abraham, uh, we know his faith wasn't in the land alone. It was, he looked for a, a city made, not made with hand. Uh, Moses filled his mission. And I don't think, uh, uh, you know, Moses too realized that it wasn't going into this land, that that wasn't the end of it. So I just, uh, I, I just, I want to encourage everyone to, to, uh, to realize that, that God wants us to be faithful. And uh, you know, when 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 the tough gets go, things get get going, and the, and it's tough, uh, you know, He's still there. As long as we hang in there, uh, God bless you.